Wow, it's wonderful to be here this uh, morning and um, excited, a little bit nervous, but uh, it's really wonderful to be here and I feel that I'm home because this is the house of God. You know, one of the days I was thinking, I don't know which song we're going to sing in heaven and whether it will be in Swahili or in English, but I guess in Swahili it will be too loud. I just been uh, just came from Tanzania where you know you know we dance and and jump and and so but it's a different expression and but we are of the same God, Amen. It's uh, it's again. So I, I I told myself this morning that you shouldn't be asking people to say Amen, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So forgive me if I keep on saying that. It's part of um, uh, something that is in me. <laughs> it's inbuilt, but thank you so much, Pastor Matthew, for inviting me and for believe, believing us and trusting us to come and stand here to share the word of God and the leadership of this church as well. It's so humbling, and we are really honored to be able to uh, be with you. And. Uh, I believe you are dealing with um, Hebrews 6, which is about, um, the context of it is about um, how do we move from where we are and grow in our faith. And actually, the encouragement is for us to really move forward, not remaining to where we were before. Although that reminds us of where we come from, but we need to kind of have that progress. And um, it's a beautiful thing to remind ourselves of the importance of repentance, faith, and other things. So Matthew shared with me, and um, I thought, what am I going to do? Let me ask you the Holy Spirit. What are you saying in terms of faith? I believe there are two ways of looking at faith. One is the faith, which is the, the doctrinal issues, the the word of God, that which was communicated to us and we believed. And the other kind of faith is in Hebrews 6 where we believe what God is saying without seeing and we want to just uh, have people who trust God. So then the Lord really, the Holy Spirit led me to uh, Jude chapter 1 and verse 20 to 21 where he talks about um, um, the idea of building ourselves in the most holy faith. And, and I think in my heart, um, it's really, really speaking to me at this time. And I think it will be relevant. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will communicate something. We are dealing with faith, but from that context of how do we move forward, how do we build ourselves in this most holy faith. And Peter said the precious faith. So let me read Jude chapter 1, and we, we just have one chapter, verse 20 and 21. The scripture says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now, we, when you go through that, what Jude is saying, you see four things, and some people will see three things. And But I see in the context of it, he talks about building ourselves up on the foundation of faith. Now, he's not saying we should be building faith or the faith. He said we build on the foundation. That means faith stands on its, on its own and then we build ourselves on that faith. Number two, he talks about praying in the Holy Spirit. And number three, he said keep yourselves in the love of God. And the last one, looking for the mercy of God 
unto eternal life. Meaning, we are to wait for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but when we sang about that song that I have decided to follow Jesus Christ, it kind of reminded me on the day I was baptized. Because that's the song that they sang, that I have decided to follow Jesus. And the ultimate thing is about the Lord coming or us going to him and be with him forever. So there are four things, and I, I, I'm not sure that we can deal with them, all of, all, all of them today. But I think, uh, I feel in my heart we can perhaps deal with those two. And those two really helps us to kind of fulfill the other two, if you will. Building ourselves up on the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. So let me, as you know, the background of what Jude was talking about, he actually wanted to speak about uh, salvation. And he wanted to remind people about the common salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Then he changes his mind because he noticed something that was going on in the church and I said, Beloved, I wanted to really write about our salvation and to encourage you to keep on going. But then I've noticed something within the body of Jesus Christ that I really I feel like I should write to you. And he talks about contending for our faith. Oh, please help me. Let me just say hallelujah to myself. <laughs> contending. For our faith. And then that is from verse 3 where he said, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I find it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. And then he says, for certain men have crept unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of our God into rudeness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So there were kind of teachings that were coming in in the church that Jude thought it is really important for us to encourage believers to be alert and to be able to uh, move forward and strengthen themselves in what they have received. And Jude identifies some few characteristics in, in, in the church at that time, which I will go through very quickly. He talks about the way of Cain which is in Genesis 4, and we all know what happened to Cain when they were instructed to, give, I mean, to bring offering or sacrifice to God. It seems like Abel brought that sacrifice with the faith. And, of course, uh, Cain's sacrifice was not accepted, and he became very angry. And, and God said... If you do well, will you not be accepted? And perhaps that's a question we, I always ask myself. There's a possibility of doing well and to be accepted by God. But he was, he continued and, and he actually, God, you know, God will always remind us in our hearts and say, you know, I think what is happening in your heart is not right. You better put it right. But he continued to the end where he, killed his brother. So Cain pitified the way of unbelief and empty religion or religiosity, which leads to jealousy and, and sometimes even in the church we find there's a contentious and a disagreement and people who have inability even to repent or see your brother and, and talk to your brother and reconcile. So that's what Jude is seeing in the church. And then he talks about the era of Balaam, which is, is all about compromising. Now, I thought about it. I don't know 
what you see in the world. In my theological training, one of the things that we were wrestling about is the um, idea of how do we become relevant in our society without compromising. So we need to love people, we need to, uh, yes, you know, there's a love of God that needs to be communicated to the people, but how do we do that without watering down the word of God? So the way of Balaam is kind of, you hear the instruction, but you are unable to follow that instruction because of the hardness of the heart. And then the rebellion of Korah, and this is the issue of disagreement again in the church, where there's a lack of respect or recognizing leadership. And then it brings confusion even in the church. You can pray, you can have a nice praise and worship, but without that recognition of authority, sometimes the enemy finds a room. So that was the background. Now that's when we come to the point where he's really encouraging believers and to say, now you've seen what is happening and now you need to contend for your faith. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. (laughs) You need to contend. You need to make sure you build yourself on the most holy faith. And that's kind of growing. And, and, uh, you know, thank you for leading us in that song. You say, I have decided. There's one thing to decide. And there's another thing to Really make sure that you follow through your decision. Now, I've been a Christian for over 25 years. It's it's a journey. Now, I'm not trying to be legalistic and thinking that I've I've got self-righteousness. I know the Holy Spirit helps us, as we shall see. But we need to make that decision to follow Christ. And that comes from our understanding of the value we have. And, and I find this to be really, really important. How do I value the, fee, the faith that which I have received? How does that, you know, set in my heart? How do I feel about that precious? How do I call it in a way? Do I see it as a precious? Do I see it as something really I've received something important? Because that will propel us to contend. Without which, if I don't see the goodness of the Lord, it will be difficult for me to sort of make an effort. Somewhere else, Peter said, make diligence. We need to be diligent. Now, there are those two things that I said we will follow through in our, which helps us to build ourselves in faith. So he talks about um, building ourselves on the most holy faith. Now, the, the faith he's talking about here is about doctrine. It's about the teaching, not just believing. So we have uh, so much going on in the society today. The world is a confused place. I was talking to brothers here this morning, and I said, from what I do, I can now see where the society is. And um, every day I kind of really reflect on what I do. And that tells me as a believer that perhaps, not perhaps, something has gone wrong in our way of believing and our value systems. And actually... The word truth is very contentious because people believe that, you know, you and me, we have our own truth. In other words, there's no absolute truth. But our Lord Jesus Christ was straightforward. He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. If I was in Tanzania, people would say, Amen. (laughs) 
I just make, 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 want you to laugh a little bit. You don't have to do that. So the idea there is to keep us focused as we build ourselves on the most holy faith. And actually towards the end is to keep us from falling away from faith, the foundation of our faith. And as I said, how do we do that? First of all, we need to remind ourselves that we cannot do it on our own. Jesus Christ is the foundation upon which we build up ourselves. And he is able to hold us together. 1 Corinthians chapter 3.11 This is Paul who seems to support what Jude is saying. And I'll read just verse 11 where he said, For no other foundation that can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to know that we are not just building ourselves on something that is not there. Jesus has already started and laid a foundation of our faith. So we build on that foundation. And so there's a, that element of, I don't know how you, your theology sits, but some people would argue, you know, when you come to Christ, you don't do nothing. And you know the, the theology of predestination, we said, once saved, always saved. And I don't want to go into that. But I think whenever I read the scripture, this God started to build. And then he's saying to us, make some effort and I will support you. And, and just be diligent. Build yourself. And there's a mechanism. There are ways that need, you need to follow so that you may stand firm in faith. And somewhere else Jesus said, will I find faith when I come back? So he's always, always encouraging us to really, really focus on what he has already started. So no one else can lay any other foundation except that which has already been laid, which is Jesus Christ. And I love Apostle Paul, and I'll be speaking. He will be helping us to make sense of what we are saying. When he wrote to uh, Colossians, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, he's kind of talking about the same thing. And I read from verse 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. As you have been taught, abounding in it with the thanksgiving. What a beautiful encouragement. So I said, as you have re received, we are talking about how do we progress. Now this is what Apostle Paul is telling the church. Remember how you received. Now that can be a problem again, depending on where we build our foundation, how you started. It's always good to revisit our foundations. Somebody told us a story that he bought a house with one story and a lot of money. And then he kind of went to his brother to ask him. The brother is an engineer. He wanted to ask him for an advice on how to renovate the house. So the brother came and straight went to the foundation and he told him, we need to dig a little bit and see the kind of foundation that 
is there. And then I will give you more advice on whether you can build another story up. And the brother said, when they had found where, how the foundation was laid, he said, you need to knock this building down. He said, what? And then he said, if you want to carry on, you can carry on building. But one day, it will be disaster. My advice is that you knock this foundation now. And then you start building again. And that story really teaches us. Because Paul says, there's no any other foundation except Jesus Christ. And he went on to say, now be careful how you build on that foundation. So then we are to make that effort. And we know that Jesus said, uh, I mean, the writer of Hebrews said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus is really helping us in that journey. But we keep building ourselves on that faith. You know, I said something, I don't know whether I was making any sense. I said, God created us as free being and he, he's, he's not operating us as robots. He would have, he can make us follow him. But he doesn't want to coerce us. This is why I say, if you open the door, I will come in. We are to be willing and we are to uh, make that conscious decision that I want, particularly this year, I want to grow. I want to change. And so when we make that decision, then we invite the Holy Spirit to help us. Number two is praying in the Holy Spirit. So we talked about being able to build ourselves in a way that we follow God's word. That's what I was talking about. Making sure that we are not swayed by new doctrine and new acceptable social norms, if you will. Because today there's a philosophical ideas in our social structure today, there are issues that many people, including some of my friends, have now come to conclusion that Christianity means nothing to me. But I say, even if the Bible goes away, if I don't read the Bible, I know Jesus through experience because he has touched my life. I don't know about you. So number two, we said, in order to progress, one of the things that helps us to build ourselves on the most holy faith is praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, praying in the Holy Spirit is not just speaking in tongue, as Paul would say, but it is allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us every day as our friends and our helper. So the Holy Spirit help, helps us to pray according to the will of God. And this is found in the book of Romans 8, 26 and 27. I'll read quickly. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession, praise God, for us that with groaning which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How beautiful is that? The Holy Spirit 
himself intercedes for you and for me. So then it is our decision to invite him to always wanting him to help us and lead us. I don't know about you, but now I came to a point where I used to ask, and I'm still asking the Holy Spirit sometimes, please, can you wake me up at five o'clock in the morning? I need to pray. And he's faithful. <laughs> he's faithful. Sometimes it seems like there are small things, but, you know, have you been to a place where you want to pray and you feel like you need to go to bed immediately? Or you are in a praying session, you're praying and uh, people falling asleep. But after prayer, everybody is chatting. <laughs> that tells us there's a spiritual battle. I don't know whether you believe that. This is why the Holy Spirit is so crucial and important in our daily lives. So he helps us. One of the problems we have, which is, I call it, embedded problem in our spiritual journey, is that Paul said, I wrestle in my flesh. Sometimes I want to do the will of God, but I find doing the opposite. I want to go to church, I want to pray, I want to fast on Thursday. But I, I find that you know, the body is really, really pulling me. The desires of the flesh seems to uh, really take hold of me. But that's the work of the Holy Spirit to come in. Galatians 5 would say, walk ye by the spirit, so that you may not gratify the desires of the flesh. And then he goes to list the desires of the flesh that are always in battle, and two are in conflict. So Paul said, thank God for Jesus Christ, and we also thank God for the Holy Spirit who helps us. And the Holy Spirit guides us to know the truth of the gospel. As we know, as I said earlier, truth is really, really contentious subject at the moment. We live in a pluralist society and a egalitarian society where people believe anything and everything. But we are to build ourselves on Jesus Christ. And this is what John said, and Jesus said, uh, John 16, 12 and 13. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. So the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. He helps us when we have so much going on, those information that we come across, then we can be able to make that distinction and build ourselves on our most holy faith. And I want you us to read the final scripture before we pray which also helps us to reflect on the importance of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 and 5, I'm going to read through, and then we finish. This is what Paul said. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 and 2, 5, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with the excellence of speech or wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except 
Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Demonstration of what? Spirit and power. And then he gives the reason that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You see, sometimes our faith can be built on the wisdom of men. Eloquence of speech. And I, I kind of resonate with what Paul is saying this morning. I'm coming to you with the trembling and fear. But I bring the Holy Spirit who is able to build us up. Because he's the one who can change our lives. He said, I know you Greeks, you love ideas. You want the preachers that when they speak, you're kind of, wow. Pastor Matthew, bring him back again. Because that's what they were doing. They told Paul, would you please come back tomorrow? Because while you speak seems to bring new ideas but Paul said when I came to you this time I made a decision to come with my philosophical ideas I want to bring Christ whom was crucified and the power of the Holy Spirit to change and transform your lives so that your faith may not be on philosophies and ideas of men but on the foundation of the power of the Holy Spirit oh that is wonderful remember they were unable even to testify before the Holy Spirit came upon them Peter was really fearful and timid but when the Holy Spirit came upon them and in them they were bold enough They were able to stand. They were able to share the gospel. They said we should not respect and just, um, I mean, we should really follow the will of God. And so that's, that's what I'm praying for, that God will sustain us and help us through his power. And when the Holy Spirit comes in us, we stand firm. We are not wavering. You know, you don't hear that story and then you change. You don't hear that philosopher and then you are already changed you know whom you have believed and we are to follow him to the end hallelujah because that's really important and then verse 11 quickly for what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which, man, with which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with the spirit. But the natural man does not receive the things of the, spirit, of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So we are to really follow the Spirit of God and his guidance. He will empower us and help us. You know, for the Greek, as I said, it was a stumbling block because they... Broke. They wanted to, to hear new ideas. And for the Jews, it was about signs. And in, in other Christian setting, it's about what the manifestation of the power of God. I want healing. I want that. I want to see first before I believe. But if faith is about believing without seeing. So God can manifest himself. So my friends... Let's keep on building ourselves on God. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us. 
I want to just uh, pray through two scriptures, which you know, towards the end, Jude is praying for believers. And he said, Jude 1, 24 and 25, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you will help us. You keep us from falling. We pray that God help us to reflect in our inner man and, and think it through where we are in terms of our faith and what we believe in. And also allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. And I pray that God you keep us going and standing until that day when we see you in glory. And God, you said through your servant Paul in Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We pray that God, you will complete us and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.